I don't think, you know, six months out of a mental hospital, you're ready to like take on like a Columbia record deal and like make, yeah, I had no idea how to even like my song structures. I didn't know how to write songs really. Um, I knew what I wanted. Um, but, uh, so I would just be on, uh, KCR all the time. Um, just kind of like spinning verses and then, uh, uh, the necro thing came about because, um, we, uh, uh, I, he sampled my voice, uh, a line from one of my demos in his demo, or it was something like that. Uh, a, the line was like, the more the blood, the merrier or something like that. And I was like, oh shit, that was cool. I'd never heard anyone use, uh, sample my voice, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, at that point, like Slick Rick was probably the most sampled voice, like in in rap at the time, and um, <clears throat> I had always the the Clockwork Orange thing was. I read the book of Clockwork Orange when I was in Stony Lodge, um, and I related to it. And I was fifteen. He's fifteen in the book, experimenting on him. All this shit. Was, I was out of my head. I was like, this book is about me. Like I can't, you know. And then, you know, one of the staff was like, you got to see the movie. So, when, of course, I couldn't watch it in there. So when I got out, I was like, I have to see this movie. As soon as I saw the movie and I heard the music, I was like, that's it. That's going to be my first song. And, uh, you know, you should sample a Clockwork Orange. It took a while to get it right. And I remember DJ Riz at the time, it was like a time stretch issue. And nobody really knew how to do that. And it wasn't like a uh, a common thing at that point, like with a lot of producers, like, you're just kind of like looping shit and like, but I wanted the whole thing. I didn't just want just the first, you know, a couple of bars. I wanted the whole, um, and he hooked it up and, you know, he, he played bass on it. it. came out great. Um, the first version I had was just a, um, I just had the loop of it. Like he had just hooked up the loop so I could write to it. And then, uh, you know, I was at work, I was working at Burger King and, uh, I was writing it there and I kept putting it in my headphones when it, when it would slow down. I put the headphones on and wrote it. So I wrote it on a Whopper rap and, and, uh, I remember when the record came out, I wanted, I didn't have, you know, any info. So like I wanted to put the Burger King number on the record as like contact info. And it was funny because it was like afterwards I was like still working there. Like people were trying to like book me for shows, which I didn't know how to play shows either. They were trying to book me for shows and it'd be like, Hey, Burger King, you know, and it'd be like, yeah, can I talk to Cage? And then like, oh yeah, sure, he's here. You know, my manager was cool with letting me take my my calls there. And I think I got my like my first check was for like like three G's or something like that. And I was like, Psh, I'm quitting Burger King. You know, I just made fucking three G's right in this fucking this little ass fucking thing on a Whopper wrap or whatever. And you know, three G's to me back then was a lot of money. 